What's good, guys? Today is Wednesday, December the 22nd, 2021. This story came out on December the 20th. And also, it may sound familiar to you because it came out in a Dr. Phil episode. I think it was December the 6th. I may be off a day or so on that. It's coming out of Virginia. And I want to thank Marie722 for sending it to me. Woman trying to free brother from prison calls him a hero for murdering her abusive dad. On paper, Christopher Bennett sure sounds like a textbook bad guy. Nearly 20 years ago, at the age of 18, the Virginia man walked into his stepfather's home, aimed a gun at his head, and pulled the trigger. He was ultimately convicted of murder and sentenced to an astonishing 1,800 years in prison for the crime. But according to his family, Christopher isn't a stone-cold killer. Instead, he's a hero. In fact, his mother and two half-sisters recently appeared on an episode of Dr. Phil to proclaim his innocence. But the most moving interview was with Bennett's half-sister, Cassandra Cassie McDormand, who said the only reason he killed their father in the first place was to protect Cassie and her sister from ongoing abuse. Bennett never denied shooting his stepfather, Vincent McDorman, but to this day, he insists he was justified. For years, the native of Craigsville, Virginia, has said that he went to his stepfather's home the night of July the 25th, 2003, with the intention of picking up a check. At the time, the teen said that Vincent McDorman had convinced him to testify against his mother in an upcoming custody hearing, and even offered payment. But just as the teen arrived, he overheard a disturbing conversation that horrified him. From outside the home, Christopher Bennett could hear the voice of his six-year-old half-sister, Victoria Vicky McDormand, who sounded traumatized. Then, clear as day, he could hear her pleading with her father, begging him to stop touching her. Christopher Bennett quickly forced his way into the home, where he says he caught his stepfather molesting Vicki McDormand. In the moments that followed, Bennett shot and killed Vincent McDormand and then stole his checkbook. The teen was ultimately charged with murder, breaking and entering, and robbery, all three of which he had pleaded guilty to in court. When the plea bargain was offered, his family was shocked at the choice the teen was presented with. It's going to be a death sentence, or he could take a plea deal of 1,800 years, Vicki McDormand told WHSV in 2020. So he took a plea deal of 1,800 years. For years, Christopher Bennett's family has been trying to get him freed. They've organized local rallies and protests begging the governor of Virginia to overturn his conviction and even launched a Change.org petition calling for his release. To date, the Change.org petition has well over 150,000 of the 200,000 signatures it needs. But during their recent interview with Dr. Phil, Bennett's two half-sisters, as well as his mom, Elizabeth Libby Elstock, went one step further in explaining why their brother needs to be set free. According to Cassie McDormand, the abuse that she and her sister Vicki McDormand endured as children was horrific. Vincent wasn't just physically violent with his children. He was also sexually abusive. Both women have said that their father frequently molested them whenever he was alone with them, and they were powerless to stop him. When my dad wanted you to stay in his room that night, you would go catch fireflies with him beforehand, and that's how you knew it was your turn, Cassie told Dr. Phil. The night that Chris killed Vincent, it was Vicky's turn to stay in Vincent's room. The next thing she knew, her six-year-old sister was running upstairs to tell her their dad had been shot. 
A Virginia man serving a life sentence in prison rallied with supporters in Richmond asking Governor Ralph Northam to grant him clemency. Christopher Bennett's story was first told on an episode of Dr. Phil on December 6th. When Bennett was 18, he killed his mother's boyfriend, who allegedly sexually abused Bennett's mother and sisters. For his crime, Bennett received an 1,800-year sentence. His family said yesterday they want him freed. And Chris was wrong for breaking in that night, you know, and I'll never say he wasn't. Chris was wrong for taking the man's checkbook, but for protecting his sisters, he shouldn't have gotten 1,800 years. That should not have, you should, protecting your family shouldn't be a crime. An online petition has received over 150,000 signatures to date. People came from Indiana, Georgia, Michigan, and other states around the country. This is the actual change.org petition to free Christopher Bennett. As the article said, they needed 200,000 signatures. They have 154,232 signatures as of the time of this video. Now, Underneath it says all money donated to the link below goes to Chris and there is a link in that in the petition itself it Says in July of 2003 Christopher Bennett broke into Vincent D. McDormand's house with the intent to get a check Vince had promised to give him if he lied in court against his mother so she wouldn't get custody of the girls living in Vince's care When Chris broke into the house he heard the youngest who was six at the time begging her dad to stop touching her he was hurting her. Chris ended up killing Vince to stop the abuse on his younger sisters. He was given three life sentences, being 600 years each, giving him a total of 1,800 years he has to spend in jail. CPS refuses to remove the girls from the home where they were physically and sexually and emotionally abused by their father. If Chris had not broken that night and heard his little sister's cries for help, it would have gone unnoticed and they would have had to endure more years of abuse. Please sign and share to bring this hero home. And then below you can sign and uh, you can share. You can also donate money if that's what you choose to do. Now, they've also been having rallies to free Christopher Bennett. And there was one particular speaker um, that just really... It needs to be shared what she said because it's of great importance so I'm gonna go ahead and play the video of her speaking at this rally now to me Chris a year ago exactly one year ago this month and when I heard his story on my podcast being the host we couldn't speak and tears were pouring down my eyes um, on the way here I was reaching out to another group of people I advocate for in a rural town in South Carolina and I told them, I remember last year, our country was torn apart with the Black Lives Matter movement, and we were arguing on whether Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. And I told them, the best All Lives Matter movement needs to begin in the courtroom. Because when it comes to our justice system, if you come from a low-income family, there is no privilege. If you don't have the knowledge that you need in the courtroom, there is no privilege. And if you don't have the money to pay these attorneys to really work for you, there is no privilege, no matter who you are. When I watched the Dr. Phil show, I heard Janet mention several things on his case that could have been done to fight for him. And those of us in the criminal justice field, whether we're advocates or attorneys, we can name even more. Janet and I, when we first met, we were on the phone for almost two hours talking about every little thing that they could have done to help Chris with this case. But because Libby doesn't make that type of money to get that kind of attorney, they were stuck with a public defender. And we all know that public defenders are just going to either make you sign a plea, and if you even attempt to fight for your life, they're going to throw the book at you. Chris being an 18-year-old boy going into the system, I wish that one of these pictures had that boy on it, because that's who entered the system. This is who we're trying to bring out. Um, we talk about the criminal justice system. I think the state of Virginia is more concerned about the life that was lost as far as Vincent. But I don't think he understands that not just Vincent's life was lost, but Vincent had also taken lives. He completely altered the way the girls live, and as well as Chris, the things that they had to endure being babies, being molested, 
they talked about the things that have made them feel then as well as now well into their adult lives. And I apologize to you all if I say too much. I'm not trying to break anybody down. I just want the governor to really understand when he makes this decision. When a person gets molested as a young age, it's a lot. I've never been molested, but we as humans were sensitive and we get triggered by anything good, bad, or whatever. But a child being molested by the person that they're supposed to trust, their parent, that's got to be a lot. Um, I listened to one of the sisters, I think it was Vicky, say that every time she, like, she can't lay in the bed with any of her partners. When the rest of us, we can't wait to cuddle. But for her, it's like, I just want to get this over and get away. Because she's triggered by her memories that happened when she was six years old. This is something that's forever going to hurt her. Sometimes therapy helps it, but it doesn't really take away everything. So no one ever addressed what their life was like. And I wonder if Virginia even thought about them when they gave this ridiculous sentence out. When you sentence somebody that stops them from being molested to 1,800 years, the message you're giving them is that their life didn't mean nothing, only this man that molested them. You're basically telling Kristen he should have just allowed it to continue and went on about his business. What would any of us have done? I think I look at my children. If anything happens to them from adult to, ch to childhood, I think I would be just like Chris. I think I would snap, and I would probably sit in somebody's prison as well. I don't think they're being fair. What would you expect an 18-year-old boy to do? The young pictures I've seen of Chris, he was very slim, and he wasn't big enough to handle a grown man of that size. So what else did they expect him to do? I want them to take in consideration that that young boy admitted his guilt and he took an 1,800-year sentence plea because he didn't want to hurt his mother anymore. He wanted to live, even if it meant him being caged up for the rest of his life. But now, the state of Virginia has had Chris for, what, almost 19 years now? So you pretty much had him the exact amount of time he lived before this crime was committed. I think we're even. In this time, Chris has taken classes. Chris has learned trades. He doesn't get in any trouble. He's a hell of a person. When he writes me JK messages, he is more concerned about what I got going on in my life than anything he's got going on in that jail. He's always checking on me. If he heard, of, if his mom told him I had a headache, he's giving me advice on how to treat that headache. He's, there's nothing I'm going through on the outside world as bad as what he's going through in prison. He's caged up. They walk prisoners like animals. They get to go out for like an hour, get some air, wreck time, whatever, and then they're back into their cage. They don't get to eat good quality food like we do. I think he's paid it, I think he's paid for it enough. And I'm asking that the governor do the right thing. Clemency is a way that you can forgive him. And when you forgive, it does not mean look at the crime. The nature of that crime is never gonna change. It's always gonna be the exact same thing. Take a look at the boy that went into the system and pay attention to the man. The man has shown that he's got his life together. I know Chris is never going to commit another crime. I know he's not going to get out and murder anybody because he's not that type of person. He was only trying to save his sister. So on behalf of everyone in Atlanta, in Georgia, and in all across the United States, I'm asking that this governor please grant him privacy. So she was a very powerful speaker, and she's right. She's right about everything she said. Um, he has spent the same amount of time in there that he had lived before he committed the crime. Uh, he's more than done his time. Had he not done what he did, his two little sisters would have suffered for many years, well beyond, uh, and it would have gone unnoticed. So it's really terrible. Um, so I'm really hoping that if, even if you don't share the video, if you would just share the change.org petition, that would be great. Fantastic. Um, I'm hoping that the governor will grant him clemency. There's a lot of people that are putting pressure on the governor to do so. And I wanted to get this story out there for those that had not heard it. I'm just now hearing it. So regardless, um, like I said, if you just change, uh, share the change.org petition, that would be great. I will link it in the bottom and inside there is a donation box as well. So I'm going to end this story on that note, but thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it.